In this adventure in Harmony, we're going to start learning how to set up some basic rigging. But before we begin, just want to verify under preferences that we do have focus on mouse enter selected. That's always going to be important as we move forward. Now to do this, what I want to do is I'm going to rename my layer and I'll just call it rough because what I like to do is to just start out with a simple sketch, um, not in that color, I'm gonna use black here. I'm gonna start out with just a simple sketch of what I am thinking. So I'm going to just create a basic character body and with this, So I have my basic character and then what we're going to be doing here is we're going to rig up a simple arm. So as we rig up this arm, it's going to allow us to move it. And when we move it, we're going to be able to have a relationship between our upper arm, our lower arm, and our hand. So what I'm doing is just roughing out the approximate shape. Now, the type of rig we're going to do, we're not going to worry too much about the joints and how those come out in their finished form, but instead are going to just set it up with basic overlapping color and live with it for now knowing that down the road we can create something that's a little bit more interesting and a little bit better. Now if you haven't turned on your light table when we add other layers then these lines will be in our way and a little bit too dark. So we will want to turn on light table as we work here with this and I'm just kind of envisioning as I started with my shapes. So I'm creating a cat-like character. Why? Well, because we can. It's animation. Animation allows us to simplify. It allows us to exaggerate. It allows us to create things that are interesting. So with this sketch done, what I'm going to do is click to add in a few more layers here. Now the layers I want to work with, I'm going to uh, set these up so that I need a body layer. I want a head layer so I can animate it separately. So as your projects grow in complexity and we make more complete animatable rigs, every element that moves independently is going to be on its own drawing layer so we have control over how it works. Now I want to make a hand, lower arm, oh, got to rename that, and then upper arm. And on the final one, we just click add and close. Now I can just add to this arm. If we had left and right, we would need to put designations on that, but in this instance, we're just going to be working on creating a simple character. So now, continuing forward, what I'm going to do is create my artwork that I want to use. And remembering that when we're drawing, if I hold down on a Mac, it's Command and Option. On Windows, it's Control and Alt, that allows me to shift my animation wheel so that I'm able to draw in a more comfortable manner. Now to reset it, Shift and the letter M allows me to reset that. What I will want to do, oh, I'm going to have to erase a little bit because I want the leg on top, is when we're at 
parts that will be underneath. So the neck here, this is underneath, so I can just simply close it off. Now if we were completing the leg, I would be closing off the leg and then it would be aligning, but this part here, I don't want. So with that, we can just grab the eraser and if I just erase the edges, I can select, delete, and clean it up. So that gave me a body shape that I'll just be able to fill. Oh, got to choose the fill color when it's time, but I don't want to do it just yet because I want my reference for the rest of my line art. Going back into here, I have to pay attention to which layer is currently active. So I want to rotate this a little bit so I can move in a natural hand motion. If I want to zoom in while I'm working, I use the number one or number two on the keyboard. One zooms out, two zooms in. And then spacebar allows me to very easily move my view around and this allows me to create the kind of artwork that I am looking for here. We'll color it in after we have completed everything. But it's useful to rotate your view while you're working, to pan it around using the space bar. It gives you, well, not on the head layer anymore. Uh, well, upper arm and then I'll work my way down. Now as we have our arm shapes, what we want to be thinking about is eventually we will have overlap. So that overlap is going to be that section where it overlaps and we will learn how we can create invisible joints with our artwork. And if I create a line I don't like, I can undo it. So if you are using a drawing stylus to work, then you're able to set it up with, if it has a button on it, I like to set the button for undo on my stylus so I don't have to hit the keyboard. I can just click on the stylus to Create it. And let's move that over. So the hand here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a basic fist shape. So the shape I want for the hand, and if we turn off rough so we can see, is going to be a fist. Because in this example, we're going to be creating some movement that follows along for rock, paper, scissors. And since we always start out with your hand in that fist position in the rock, that's what I'm starting with. Now, when you experiment with your own, you don't have to do paper, scissors. You could do something else. You could be doing you know, robot, ninja, monkey, uh, zombie, or rock, paper, scissors, Spock, I mean, you have lots of options that you can work with. Now it's time to color it. So I've already created colors. I have a fill color I will choose for the body. Now if I click on the head, I can fill the shapes for the head and then work my way to the hand. Now H and J on the keyboard, H moves up, J moves down in your layer stack. So if you like to use keyboard shortcuts, you can certainly do that and that will give you flexibility with it. Now we can see 
this is what it looks like. I may end up wanting to reverse order the artwork as I have it here. We'll see. Uh, but it'll work okay for this learning purposes because once we make joints that are proper and have invisible seams on them our artwork and animation does look a little bit better. But we do need to create in this instance where the upper arm is going to control the lower arm. So if I move the upper arm, the lower arm and hand go with it. That's ultimately what we're after here in this example. With everything currently colored and drawn, and when we're happy with that, it's now time to add in pegs. And when we add in the pegs, what that allows us to do is to control the movement of it. We should always be animating pegs, not animating drawing layers. So with all my layers selected, down in my layer palette, I can just simply click on the add peg and it now selects everything. A handy tip right now is to press the escape key on the keyboard. And when we do that, that deselects everything. So Remember, escape while deselects, you don't have to grab a different tool, click off, or whatever else you're trying to do. Now, to make this a little bit easier, and to start building the relationships of our layers, I find it's better to collapse all of the pegs. It also makes our layer view a little bit easier, so we can see what's there. and what we want to do is we want to set the pivot points for each of our layers. The pivot points are the place that it will transform from. And we do that by using the advanced animation tools. And remember, if we don't see it, we can right click up in the toolbar area and choose advanced animation. So mine are currently up and I will choose the rotate advanced animation tool. It's important when we're working with advanced animation tools and the transform tool later that we have our peg selection mode active. This is really important. So we need to make sure we select that so that peg selection mode is active. And if you select it on one, it carries over to the other, but it's a good practice just to verify before you start selecting. And when I choose a layer, if I choose a layer, it should show yellow around it. But if I choose and turn off peg selection mode like the head here, you can see it turns kind of pinkish purple and the frame around it is pinkish purple. We don't want that. With peg selection mode active, when I click, it's yellow. So we should always be looking for yellow when we're trying to animate. When we're trying to work with drawings, doing drawing substitution and things like that, which we will be doing as part of this example, then we turn off peg selection mode so we can select the drawing because we're going to add in additional hands so we can just swap out which hand we're looking at to create an animated effect. So once again, the rotate tool and we need to then select the head and once we have selected it, we need to move our pivot point to where we want it to be able to rotate from. So I want the head to rotate as if it's attached to the neck. Now, by clicking around and just doing things, I've added in keyframes, I don't want those yet, so I'm just clicking off, hit escape to turn off our, um, or deselect everything. So now peg select mode is on. I, if I click on body, I'm going to have the body rotate at the hips. In this example, I'm not going to be animating the body, but as we build more complex characters, the body, the legs, everything is going to have its own pivot point and be able to be transformed. So I now am setting it up so that the lower arm animates at the shoulder. The upper arm will animate from, I mean, the. Upper arm animates from the shoulder, lower arm will animate from the elbow. 
And now if I click on the hand, we'll move that down so it animates from the wrist. And once again, get rid of those keyframes. I don't want them yet. We'll add in more keyframes later. We just don't need them yet. Now comes the fun part. So it makes it easier if you've collapsed your peg layers while we're doing this next step. This is where we're going to build the hierarchy. So if I click on the hand layer, so if I just click on it and I, I want to click and not click so that it thinks I'm trying to rename it. So if I just click on it and if I drag the hand layer to the lower arm, it disappears. And if I drag the lower arm to the upper arm, it disappears. Now, let's see what's going on here. If I open up the upper arm, we'll see there's the lower arm, there's the hand. So we can see that the hand is now a child of the lower arm. The lower arm is now a child of the upper arm. So we can see that with the indenting that is happening. So we can see the layers of artwork. We can see the layers of our pegs. So it's now a parent-child relationship. If I go to the upper arm, if I were to rotate it, we can now see the other two parts go with it. And that is exactly what we want to have happen. Now I want the head and the upper arm both to move with the body. So if I move the whole body, they go with it. Eventually we'll create a master peg on future projects where we'll have a master peg that we use to control the movement of our character around on the scene. And then all of our individual body parts get their own pegs for control purposes. So now when we are working with it, if I click on the arm with peg selection mode active, chooses the whole arm. If I click on the body, everything's going to move. If I just click on the head, just the head moves. So we have a hierarchy. The arm and the head will move when the body moves. And when the arm moves, the upper arm will control the lower arm in hand. The lower arm will control the lower arm in hand. And then hand is like the head where it just moves itself, which is pretty fun. So I'm just going to delete those keyframes. I don't want those right now. But we're in good shape because we've established all of our pivot points. And it's a good idea to click on each of your individual layers before you start animating to make sure that all your pivot points are indeed where you want them to be in your project. On this animation, we're going to focus primarily on just doing simple rotation movements using this parent-child relationship in lieu of doing more complex where you might do some skewing, some squash and stretch, and other things like that. We're just going to try and keep it simple while we get the basics down. And then as we move into more complex rigged characters, then we will be able to use more of our transform options while we're animating. But for this one, try and just Keep it simple so that you're able to control your animation. I figure my animation's probably going to need more frames, so I'll just extend it out right now. Again, we're not looking at the rough layer. Just have my body layer. If I go to the end, we can see it disappears. So it's collapsed. It's really, really important that we have collapsed so we just see the top level peg. That's going to simplify things because now I don't have to highlight a bunch of layers just with the one item selected. I hit F5. It extends out the exposure of our artwork for the entirety of our animation. So that puts us into a good position to be at. Now it's time to start animating. To begin my animation, I click on frame one. I hit function key F6 that puts in a starting keyframe. So I am going to sit here and do nothing for, well, in this case, I think I'll go for nine frames. That works. Now I do have uh, 
motion keyframes on, so we see that connection occurring between them. I'm not using stop motion keyframes. There will be times where you will want to be alternating back and forth. It will depend on your project. So the first thing I want to do is have my character raise its arm. So this is going to be a simple arm raise. Now, H and J move you up and down your layer hierarchy. In this case though, I want to move up and down my peg hierarchy. So when I have a hierarchy like this arm, if I click on the, sm the smallest child, because it goes hand, lower arm, upper arm. So if I hit the letter B, it moves up. If I hit B again, it moves up. If I hit B again, it moves even higher. But if I hit Shift B, Shift B, Shift B, it moves down my rig. So that can be a useful way when we're animating because as you get really complex characters with lots and lots of layers, it's hard just to click on the one you want. Sometimes knowing your peg hierarchy, you can just move up and down. Well, so I'm waiting for the rotate tool. So I'm going to move the arm up to here and then I can just click on that, move that up and shift B, move that hand up here. So we can see how we moved it up. Now what I want to do is as for fun, I'm going to put a little bit of drag in. I'm going to pull this arm back down, pull the hand down. So as the arm moves, so we don't always move in a dramatic or robotic fashion. Different parts move differently. So now this is my preparatory movement, which if I want to exaggerate that even a little bit more, we kind of break the elbow and pull the hand back. And if we want to watch that, we'll just hit stop here, hit play. There you go. If you decide though, because this is now my initial throw that is going to be for what I, maybe I want to slow it down. And I think I'm breaking the wrist too far here, so let's not break it quite as far. And if we decide we want to even put a little bit back, so we have a little bit of settling going on. Okay, so it gives me a start. Now, looking in my timeline, I'll notice that I have black keyframes and I have white keyframes. And you may be wondering, wait, we still have tweening going on and I don't even see anything happening in between there. I don't even see that motion keyframe line. And that's gonna happen as we work. We're going to have black and white keyframes. Eventually we want to try and work that we only use black keyframes and what a black keyframe is is that means there's a keyframe on every single layer. Now the very last keyframe when it goes across all layers then that always shows as red but now if I look at the upper arm here and extend it out we'll see that the arm and hand have separate keyframes and we don't care that it's adding or showing keyframes on the drawing layers because what we care is what happens when we put the keyframe on the peg layer, but let me extend that back out. We can see the white keyframe indicates that these two layers have a keyframe on them, other layers do not. So if I collapse it, we can see that that is indeed the case. Now here, only one layer is being keyframed, the hand, and I, I'm going to just pull that back. It just seemed like it it took too long to settle. Let's hit play again. All right. I like that. 
happier with that. Now I can collapse everything. And eventually we add keyframes on everything, we put things on too, and there's all kinds of other stuff we're going to do, but we're not worrying about that at this point in time. We need to remember that when we're animating, rest movements are important as well. So if I'm going to do my rock, paper, scissors, I'm bringing my arm up, but I'm not going to start my counting where I count rock, paper, scissors, shoot, or however we want to count for it. So that means we need to go up and down four times. And we could copy paste those movements or we can animate each one individually so we add, make them a little bit different so it doesn't look robotic in its nature. But once I bring my arm up, I'm probably not going to start right away. So we need to build some resting in here, some time. So I'm going to just let it sit here for nearly a second after the arm comes up and hit F6 and now you can see, oh look, we do get the line continuing. And starting at frame 29, this is where I want to move up with the arm. So to do that, I am going to pull the arm up and my first one so my rock, paper, scissors, shoot. My first time when I go up with rock, I'm going to not make it as dramatic as I will later. So we go up and then when I come down, we need to bring the arm back down. So I can now click on the arm, bring it back down And we should never just move the arm in its, we should have it, you know, some movement happening, which you should always see, it shouldn't just rotate this down from the shoulder and nothing else move. That's just not going to work. So now probably want to keep my timing relatively consistent on it in terms of how many frames up and down, but I do want to make my movements a little bit more exaggerated each time. So it's getting a little bit more vigorous with a little bit more enthusiasm. So that was rock, paper, this will be going down for scissors. As we do this, we can see, uh, I think that's a little too much for what I want. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we go back up. This is going to be my biggest movement. And as I pull it down, this time I'm not going to pull down as much. I want the arm to go out straighter. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. So we have it happening. And when I look here, before we go up during this waiting period, we're here. What I'm going to do is even I'm going to insert a keyframe and realize we can pull the head down. Oh, 
then the head. So the head goes down. I'm going to make that much closer. Fewer than the head. I'm raise the head up. And from here, I do want to insert a keyframe, so I click an F6, and now this time pull the head back a little bit more so that. I missed. So pull the head up. And but I want the keyframe for the head to is the head is here. I don't want it to go up until maybe on that final one. So let's, we're here. I select this, move my cursor. This is where focus on mouse enter is useful. Copy, and now go here. Paste, it only pasted in the head. So, all right, I think I made a mess out of the head keyframes, but guess what? Let's go fix that. Because we really don't need... So that's where it started going down. I didn't want it. That keyframe, we'll copy that. Paste it, same, so it goes up. Paste it. Copy that keyframe. Let's go here. Paste it so it stays and then it can go back down with the arm. Let's, oh, gotta move our stop out. Probably want to extend this out a little bit so we can enjoy the finish because then as it comes down. Okay. So we got some movement going on. We have the arm moving. Don't be afraid to look at it. If you put in keyframes you don't like, always remember that I could decide that, you know, I don't like any of those keyframes there. So I can just highlight keyframe minus, select on that layer. Oh, if I just collapse the layer, let's just review that. So those keyframes are there. Well, that was the body underneath anyway. So here's the head. We can see the head has keyframes. But if I collapse it, and if we just get rid of all these keyframes here, click keyframe minus, they go away. Now we can undo it, and we see that there's no keyframes on the drawing layer either. So it's important when we are working the keyframes. Now when we have this kind of hierarchy, it's hard to, we can't not get keyframes on the drawing layer when we add keyframes to the peg layer. It's just going to be doing that every time I hit F6. So we don't, we don't worry about that. But when we're working, ideally, so if I'm working on the hand, I will collapse the hand layer. If I'm working on the lower arm, I collapse that. So that way when I'm clicking on a keyframe, I'm making sure that I'm affecting what I'm trying to do. So sorry if it caused some confusion. I didn't really like what I did with the head. We'll animate it to a little bit more uh, once we complete our final step here, which is to add in that change 
of the hand. So I want when the hand hits the bottom here, well just F6, we know that is indeed our terminal spot. We want the hand to become something else. Now to do that, I need to select the hand layer. But if I select the hand layer, I'm selecting the peg layer, not the hand layer, because now I, I want to add an additional drawing to this. Much like when we added new drawings to fill in our animation, we can add in substitutions. This gives us additional options for it. Now, to do that, what we can do is if I grab the pencil tool, well, we don't have the layer active that we necessarily want. But if I turn off peg selection mode, now click, we've selected the hand artwork layer. And if I open this, we'll see that is indeed the layer that's active. Yes, I could click on the layer by opening it, but you know, I think it's faster turning on and off peg mode. You do what works for you. If I want to create a brand new hand, I can click on this create a new empty drawing. If I want to create a modification of this hand, so I want to start with this as my base, I can now duplicate this drawing. And if I do that, nothing appears different on screen, but if I go grab my pencil, grab the black color, so right now this is rock, I want to create paper. So to create paper, I'm going to extend out for my thumb. I'm going to extend out each of my, well that line was ugly. Let's try again and rotate this so I can move my pen. Let's done that. Okay, so I've created the basic shapes that I'm looking for. Now, I find if I just grab the pen tool, if I hit delete, it gets rid of the fill. So when we fill a shape, with color. We actually have a color shape and we have our lines. Now I can see I have different lines here and some that I will want to get rid of. And this is where zooming in is going to be useful. I can, we will explore in future sessions how to create super clean artwork. But right now, I'd rather not worry about that and instead worry about how we can animate because ultimately the animation part is really what we're after here. So I'm going to just clean up my lines. And because I'm not going to be, whoop, that was a little too far there. I just want to clean up a little bit of slop. With it cleaned up, grab my paint bucket, grab my purple, fill it. I'm gonna put some white claws on my creature, not the drink, but simply artwork. Now if we look here, oh, better uh, zoom out. Shift M brings me back, but if I go back one frame, we can see how the hand pops into paper. But if I want to now create scissors, and in this time, maybe for scissors, I want to start fresh. Well, I can do that. And to see the drawings that we have, we have two options. We can look at the library for a drawing layer. And if I click on the layer, we can see we have no hand, rock, paper, and we're going to create scissors. We also can add the drawing substitution tab, which if it's not visible on your list, the plus in the top corner here allows us to add these other windows 
to this collection of windows. Currently I have tool properties, library, top side perspective camera. So I have a lot of options because I've been doing a lot of things in harmony over time. But what we're looking for here is drawing substitutions. That gives a visual representation and it's a little bit easier to see what I have there. So if I want to, in this case, I'm going to add an empty drawing. I hit empty drawing. We can see it now shows up in my drawing substitutions. If I turn on onion skinning so I can at least get the basic size that I'm working on. Zoom in a little bit with it. I'll grab my pencil tool and as I want to create my scissors, probably do need to make sure that I'm drawn with black and I'm checking up here so that shows me I'm on the correct layer. Too far for that. Let's just use our handy undo on the brush or on my stylus, that is. I've created my basic shape. I'm going to angle these together as part of it. So now I have my lines. Go grab my fill. And just adjust my spacing in there a little bit so I can see. Fill it with purple, fill it with white. Turn off. So we now have our different drawing substitutions. We can use drawing substitution or the library window to navigate through things as we are trying to do it. I like the drawing substitution over the library. I think it's just a little bit easier to see because it's much more visual as we are working with it. So now I have rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And I don't want to do two things, but I could decide that in this case I want to choose scissors. The square bracket keyboard, so right above the return or enter key, below the de delete key, you'll see the square brackets. Those can also substitute your way through what you're doing. So drawing substitutions are commonly used on eyes for characters. We have different eye shapes, open and closed, but also for hands. So we can have hands in all different positions of open, closed, common gestures, a carrying hand, a athletic hand, a whatever you want it to be. So with this, now I have created my basic arm movement. And if we hit play, we can see how it sets it up. Oh. No wonder, as like it looks like it's animating because it kind of if we animate from here to here. So this one I don't I want it to remain as. So I want to do paper. So now it's rock paper scissors shoot, and we finish on paper. But if we want to switch it instead of paper, that we're doing scissors. Let's watch it again. Rock paper scissors shoot. And now we get, oh, I did it on the wrong frame. So we'll make this one go scissors as well. So then it doesn't animate through. Perfect. Now what we could do every time we go up, so going up starts right here at frame 29. So I'm going to switch back with my transform tool, I'm going to tool properties, I'm going to click peg selection mode. So this is now when we're going to start going up. So as we go up, I am going to rotate back just a little bit. As we go down, I will rotate back down. 
So you can see how that emphasizes it. And now as we go up once more, and we just gotta move this so we have a little bit more visibility. We can bring it back down. Notice I'm moving the body peg, which is now moving everything. I mean, I was thinking that's the last one, that's why I kind of went overboard with it. So this time I'll really go overboard, but that means I think I want my arm to be out here. So now let's see by we can see how adding that in makes it much more dramatic because we're not just moving the arm on a fixed body. So as it goes up from here Uh, 29 is where we start going up. And what I'm going to do is just cheat this a little bit. And let's just verify so we can see when we did this how it added keyframes to all those different layers. That's part of the arm going to just verify everything has a keyframe so I'm clicking F6 on all of it. So at 29 right now I'm going to drag the head a little bit but then the head will return here and as we go down I'm going to pull the head back just a little bit so then it slams down with it. So a couple frames in, pull it down. You can see as the body goes up the head's kind of lagging behind and then as we start our downward cycle the head is going to be remaining behind a little bit before everything comes down. So we're doing this just to add a little bit more richness to the animation. So this time it's going to be I'm going to make it even more dramatic with it. Because we typically don't want everything finishing or starting or all moving. Everything should move the same. So we have different parts that are rotating different amounts. The timing on them is a little bit different so that it creates that greater sense of life. Again, we will explore to do more than just rotation, but how can we add in squash and stretch to further exaggerate what we're doing to make it that much more rich and dynamic? And that's when your character rigs are really going to take off and become exciting. So just a quick recap. We used the transform tool. We set the pivot points. We built a parent-child relationship by dragging the layers onto each other. And if I, just gonna save quick. Now if I want to undo that, so if I wanted the lower arm not to be a child of any of these, I need to drag it up. And as I drag it up, we'll see how that little gray bar is moving over, indicating that it is where it is. So we can see right here, the upper, lower arm is a child of upper arm. If I go to here, we can see now that indicates it would be, and we drag it to the blue, but we see that gray bar telling us that it's now going to be equal to the upper arm. If I drag up to on the body and go up and I see that little blue bar, that 
the gray bar at the front of B, the blue bar indicating that's where I'm going to place the layer, we can see that now it's equal to that, and I really did destroy my hierarchy, so probably don't want to do that if, once you start animating, you really need to have your hierarchy in place, because if you move things around, it's going to blow up your animation. We use peg selection mode. We can move up and down by clicking on layers or B and shift B to navigate through our peg hierarchy while we're animating. When we want to put in drawing substitutions, we need to select that drawing layer. So I turn off peg selection mode so I can select that drawing layer. And I create my drawing substitutions that I want to work with by either empty drawings or duplicate drawings and modifying the drawing to create my different pieces of artwork. And when I do that, it gives me the ability to swap. And we will use the exact same method of drawing substitutions when we start building lip syncing or talking characters. So it is something that you will want to pay attention to. We've covered a number of fun techniques here, and I hope you're able to turn this to your advantage and create exciting and interesting animations. And when you're all done, don't forget to slap in a color card so you have a background. Again, you don't have to leave it white, but you can make your background whatever color works for you and add that into your project. And once you have your color card, you have your animation set. As always, render out a movie, navigate to where you want to put it, and export that movie for your project. Good luck and have fun.